Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome to TRT World Forum. For the last five years, the TRT World Forum has become a hub of intellectual, journalistic, and academic exchange among experts and practitioners around the world. In this beautiful city of Istanbul, at the crossroads of civilizations, our forum brings together different opinions and voices on the most pressing issues facing our world. While seeing the formation of a TRT World Forum network among the regular participants of our forum, every year we see new faces at our meetings. In the last two years, due to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, we have facilitated this conversation virtually. We are hoping to return our normal setting in 2022 and are expecting to have a more creative framework with the participation of our distinguished guests. Just like previous years, this year, we will have both public sessions and expert roundtables. This year, the public sessions will include engaging discussions on key international issues, such as the foreign policy strategies of the United States, Russia, and European nations, and the developments in crisis areas. Expert roundtables will focus on the theme of power and paradox, understanding grand strategy in the 21st century. Under the umbrella of this theme, we aim to explore increasing competition between regional and international powers. We hope to have fruitful discussions on shared and divergent interests and agendas at a time when the world faces new challenges and uncertainties. Ladies and gentlemen, for the last two decades, both experts and practitioners of international relations have engaged in discussions on the nature of international system. Significant global developments in the first decade of the new millennium triggered a conversation on the future of the world order. The global war on terror, the invasion of Iraq, and a global recession caused the international community to expect an imminent transformation in international relations. Most agreed that these developments would mark the end of the unipolar world with rising power like China, Brazil, Russia, and India, along with the European Union, creating a multipolar system. Many believe that the liberal international order would have more actors at the center. However, in the second decade of the millennium, a different picture emerged. First, there was a significant challenge to the liberal international order. Unlike previous criticisms to the institutions and norms from the rising powers, the real challenge came directly from the architect of the international system. The United States, especially during the previous administration, targeted international institutions. This led to rising distrust towards international organizations across the world. In the meantime, a trade war started between the world's two largest economies. At the end of the decade, there was less discussion about a multipolar international system and more focus on a world of great power competition. The COVID-19 crisis hit the world at the worst possible time since the end of the Cold War. In 2020, many international conflicts were left unresolved in different parts of the world. These crises occupied most of the time and energy of foreign policy makers across the world. They make it very difficult for nations to focus on forming long-term strategies and dealing global threats. Second, the lack of a reform process left international institutions weak and unprepared to handle major global crises. Not only United Nations, but also more specialized institutions, including the World Health Organization, proved to be unable to resolve global crises. Third, the idea of international cooperation was at its lowest point when the pandemic struck. This lack of cooperation caused the pandemic to move from one major power to another in the last 18 months from China 
to European Union, to the United States. Every country preferred to act unilaterally, followed protectionism when it came to medical equipment and failed to develop a framework to respond collectively to the crisis. Furthermore, the COVID crisis also demonstrated that the existing inequalities in the world are a major threat, not only to less developed nations, but all across the world. It was understood that without a fair distribution of resources and equipment, no one should expect to end the existing pandemic. Now, after two years of COVID-19, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We are at the age of the third decade of the new millennium. And from previous two decades, we have learned significant lessons that could provide signposts for building grand strategies for all nations. The emergence of global crises in the last 20 years, from terrorism to humanitarian issues, from climate change to COVID-19, show that we need a new approach in designing grand strategies of our nations. Every nation may have different near-term and long-term objectives in their foreign policies, of course. However, the previous two decades demonstrate that nations should pay attention to regional and global crises more diligently while formulating their grand strategies. Globalization not only erodes the boundaries among nations, but also dissolves the barriers that nations can build to avoid regional and global crises. For instance, in addition to security risks, long-lasting conflicts can create humanitarian challenges and economic and social problems for the region. They produce a critical distraction for foreign policymakers. Further, we have seen that international organizations require urgent reform to deal with global issues from humanitarian disasters to global climate change in a more efficient manner. Every country's grand strategy necessitates a clause to help with reform and make these institutions more effective. Finally, states must recognize that global problems require global solutions. The emergence of global crises demonstrates that without finding a global solution to these problems, it is impossible to attain the goal of stability and security. In the last few years, Turkey has followed these existing and emerging challenges in the international system and taken steps to respond to these challenges. Under the leadership of our president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, we have revised our foreign policy strategy to respond not only to our immediate security concerns, but also to regional and global problems. We made the resolution conflicts in our immediate neighborhood an important priority for our foreign policy. Turkish foreign policymakers have been involved in different initiatives to resolve the conflicts in Syria, Libya, and Iraq. We have also invited affected parties to engage in dialogue and constructive diplomacy in other crisis areas, including the Eastern Mediterranean and the Azerbaijan-Armenia dispute. President Erdogan called on nations to form international conference to negotiate and settle the disputes in these areas. Turkey also understands the importance of reform process for international institutions. Under its current structure, international institutions fail to provide solutions to global problems. UN Security Council reform is long desired, however, has yet to be attained. In the last few years, we have seen that the failure of this council to take decisive action has led to significant regional problems. We support a reform process for the organization and think it would serve both for the interests of Turkey and other nations across the world. Finally, from the very beginning of the COVID-19 crisis, we supported the idea that global problems necessitate global solutions. Solidarity and cooperation among nations are key to resolve these problems. Turkey took every step during 
the crisis to cooperate with and support other countries in this pandemic, and it will continue to do so. We believe that without effective burden sharing and cooperation, we only contribute to the prolongation of this crisis. In the age of a global pandemic and great power competition, it is important for nations to rethink their foreign policies and grant strategies. Priorities and objectives need to pay attention to what has been taking place in the world in the last two decades. Our foreign policies need to have visions to handle global problems. The competition among nations may allure countries to maintain the status quo. However, in those two decades, we all have seen the failure of that approach. Although there is a period of superpower competition upon us, other nations should act more responsibly and allocate a place in their strategies to establish a form of coordination among nations to respond to the global crises. Instead of waiting for superpowers to play the leadership role in times of crisis, other nations should join forces to attain those goals. States must face the reality that in this interconnected world, destabilization and crisis in one area will eventually spread. Constructive and innovative diplomacy and international engagement will be key in the process of containing all these challenges. Turkey is playing its role and is ready to work together with other nations. It aims to lead by example on how to achieve cooperation and dialogue among nations amid different crises and challenges. We very much welcome competition in this arena. I'm hoping that the conversations and debates in this forum will help us achieve these goals. I'm very much looking forward to learning from discussions at this forum. Thank you. Thank you very much.